It's a lot to journalists hang out if you're just joining us. And well, let's look to our next conversation where surrounding petrol subsidy in Nigeria is a hot one and it may not fizzle out anytime soon. A report of the return of the fuel subsidy regime is ruffling feathers <coughs> in many quarters. Our former pre Vice uh, President Atiku Ababaka has criticized President Bolatinubu's administration over the continued payment of subsidies on premium motor spirit, popularly known as petrol. Atiku expressed concerns over lack of transparency in the process, citing contradictions with earlier declaration by the administration that fuel subsidy has ended. Well, Atiku also expressed outrage over continued crisis in the oil sector. Biko, we understand the former PDP uh, governorship, or presidential candidate rather, is reacting to the president's uh, approval by the NNPC to use uh, last year's dividends now due to, due to a federal government now to pay uh, uh, petrol subsidy. But what do you make of these concerns with the likes of Petrol subsidy believed to have been ended by the present administration. What do you make of this? This is just politics. <laughs> and um, uh, former Vice President Atiku is an old man. He's a leader in his own right. The question we should ask is, okay, if you found yourself in this situation, what will you do? What will you do? He said a lot of things, but he didn't offer any suggestion as to how we can get out of this. This was the same man who opposed the idea of having the CBN receive payments made to the NMPC. The CBN is the government's banker. NMPC receipts belong to Nigeria. Payments made to NNPC belong to Nigeria. CBN was asked to take charge from now on that whatever payment they are making to NNPC should go to the CBN. What is wrong in that? Article criticized. They said they should have left them alone. They should not have directed the CBN to be receiving their payments on their behalf. That's when I realized that, okay, this is politics. Now let's let's go into this whole thing. President Tinubu is not a fool. And he's a human being. He has blood flowing in his veins. He made an announcement that subsidy was gone. Yes. Subsidy in the way we knew it. In the way we knew it is gone. In the way we used to appropriate money for it mm -hmm. is gone. No one can say that subsidy in the way we used to know it is not gone. None of the, none of the people saying that can bring a single marketer that subsidy was paid to. In the past, they used to pay subsidy to them now. Some of them will go and import product and divert it to Benin Republic and sell. Some of them will sell products that we paid them for, the country paid them, to bring them product. The country paid subsidy to them. They will sell it on the high seas. There are people still being put on trial as we speak. People, they can use Google to check. They will see people who are put on trial. Yeah. In fact, the son of a high-ranking politician in this country was put on trial as a subsidy thief. Subsidy, the way we knew it, is gone. That's why states are getting much more money now than before because government was not appropriate it's not appropriating money for subsidy and simply paying subsidy the way they used to pay it what then happened let's take take our minds back to immediately after the announcement that subsidy was gone right was made because we will simplify this matter what people keep us if they say subsidy is gone subsidy was removed but after subsidy was removed, our currency crashed. What was the landing cost in June 2023? July, June, July 20, what was this landing cost? It was just about 600 Naira. 
Yes. At that point, no subsidy on it. That was the landing cost. Then, when Naira crashed, naturally, the landing cost will go up. True. That is a fact of life. Oh. And the moment our, our currency crashed the way it did, and the landing cost went up. Today, the landing cost is in the region of maybe uh, 1,300 1, uh, and something. I know that in our country we do not uh, uh, include energy tax, but in spite of that, and some countries pay as much as 64% as energy tax. We do not pay energy tax in our country, but it's still in the region of 1,300 and something. Now, if the uh, if things change suddenly that you did not expect, and as a consequence of the flotation of the currency, our currency declined, and even for that decline, because when it was floated, it was around 900. Then declined to like 1,600 1, now. Mm. Who is that president? Who is so unfeeling? Who will now say, okay, because people are shouting that there should be, uh, that we should not subsidize uh, 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 PMS, then people should go and buy at 1,000 uh, 300 naira per litre. They, they are the same people who will stand on the rooftops and be calling Tinobu a, a wicked person. That is not a human being. That's nothing they will not say. Now, the NMPC creatively working with the federal government has found a way to keep petrol price constant. Now they are shouting, oh, subsidy is back. What, what if subsidy is back? What is the big deal if it's back? America India, they continue to subsidize their farmers till tomorrow. Thailand knows that. Thailand is a big rice producer. They still subsidize farmers. I've seen even protests in the past in some of these countries over uh, subsidy for commodities. So let us not attempt to make it look like it's such a big crime mm. to subsidize, to make life a little better for our people. If I, have, if I had my way, I would not even support the removal of subsidy. The reason some people convinced me was because, okay, the people were stealing from it. They were stealing through it. Because all of those things that they tell us, oh, we are subsidizing consumption, people like uh, the former CBN governor, Sanusi, who talk about the fact that we are subsidizing uh, consumption, we are subsidizing a few people, we are making a few people richer. They forget the fact that P this PMS is the oxygen of growth for SMEs. Those small companies, those small uh, business uh, enterprises, they use petrol. Even the person who grows rice, he needs to irrigate his, his, farm feed, uh, his rice feeds. They also need to buy petrol. They don't think about these things. Now we can see what people are going through. People with small trucks that they use to move things around. Is it not petrol that they use? Okay. So, and... The reality that this government didn't create is the fact that this product is an international product. There's nothing we can do about its pricing. If the price goes to 200, uh, maybe tomorrow, if uh, Russia threatens uh, America, you know, or um, uh, China threatens uh, um, India, or China tries, says it's going to bomb Taiwan. You know that will bring America into the equation. If they do that, and the price of uh, petrol, uh, crude oil, in the international market goes to $200, okay. 200 uh, dollars per barrel. Mm -hmm. So you expect a government that has something here to still come and sell, Below. sell at that uh, prevailing Right. Uh, landing cost, no. I've been saying it that petrol is a security product. That this government, having increased it that time, must not try to increase price again. I, I've been warning that they should not try it. People like Atiku and others can keep shouting that we are paying subsidy. Is it not our money as a country? What is wrong in in, in subsidizing the product. Hmm. Are we 
going to be comfortable. If you were a president, will you be happy to sell at maybe one five per liter? Can he? So this is the thing. It wasn't that subsidy was not removed. But after subsidy was removed, our currency crashed. So it should just go because the currency crashed, we should go and sell at the prevailing rate. It's not going to happen. They can say all they like. It's not going to happen. And what what the, uh, the NMPC calls it is uh, under recovery. Whatever name they choose to call it, Nigerians deserve consistent supply of the right. product. Right. And they must also buy at a rate that is affordable to them. Because if it becomes unaffordable to the ordinary Nigerian, life will become even more unbearable. That is why I support, whether it's under recovery or, or whatever they call it, I support it at this stage. We can't do, you must not increase fair price. If you increase fair price, you want to kill Nigeria. Mm. Leave it the way it is. When the price is stable, people can plan. And that's what government wants. And President Tinubu said something, I think, around October. He said, if there's a need for us to intervene, we will intervene. And there are many ways by which they can intervene. Right. They can make the forex available. Oh, yeah? Bring in this product. Look at the deal that they had with the Afrezin Bank. We provided some millions of dollars. It was meant to keep fair price stable. Right. So there are many things that they are doing. Sometimes, too, when they sell crude, let me give an example. You sell crude, you sell uh, 500,000, it's just an example, 500,000 barrels. You can then say, okay, the 200 that is on top of it, you are selling to a refiner. You can say the 200 that is on top of it, use it as the cost of refining the product that you, that you then send back to me. They've done a lot of creative things just to keep this price stable so that they don't just Absolutely. saddle Nigerians with... Uh, because it wasn't Nigerians that said, okay, uh, the Naira should crash in the way that it did. So if you are based abroad and you know where you are based, they subsidize. They subsidize all kinds of things. If you are shouting about the fact that the NNPC and the federal government have found a way to subsidize so that we don't move from the present price regime to maybe double the price, then you are not a good Nigerian. You are just looking for trouble. It is evil that makes you happy. All right, let's begin up on, on the issue of recovery now. Uh, Dr. BK said something that the NNPC well, might have recovered some of its uh, gains over time. But talking about this, this recovery, the NNPC also said that it has a net profit of about 3.297 trillion naira, you know, for 2023. What, what, what factors do you think could have contributed to this turnaround? Well, in 2023, the major thing we witnessed was the withdrawal of the subsidy. Mm -hmm which is good, and um, which is what a lot of Nigerians have always wanted. Absolutely. But the thing that they want the more now is even the availability of that product. Because we've seen that what we've not witnessed in Lagos in so many years is happening now. That is this kind of queue where even the roads are blocked. As I drove in here now, the mobile station on the Lagos Ibadu Expressway after the old toll gate has become blocked almost up to the point of the old toll gate because people are struggling to have access to the few stations which product. And that is where a lot of Nigerians are concerned. Yes. Because if an NPC, if an NPC declares a profit of 10 trillion, for instance, and we are not seeing the impact on the road, for us to have fuel, people can drive in and buy, nobody <coughs> is interested in this profit. That's why you see Nigerians don't pay attention to banks. 
when they declare their interest because the, 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 the profit re, 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 remains in the banks. It yeah. doesn't affect the man on the streets. Rather, what a lot of Nigerians clamor for, oh, okay, it's my money that they are declaring as profit. I've helped them to make that profit. But it doesn't affect them. Absolutely. So, in the process of talking about this subsidy, the concern for a lot of people has been the fact that government has not come out directly. What an NPC offered us yesterday was an explanation that we've introduced subsidy by way of reaching an agreement with government that whatever is the shortfall in the cost of getting this product to the mm -hmm. station, we are, we, are, we are paying for it. We are buying it. Mm -hmm. It's like you having a bad debt and somebody is taking it off you. Right. That person is going to put it back somewhere. Because what it means is the money an MPC should ordinarily put in the Federation account is going into that. So it's subsidy. And the way I see government and successful ones at that is the ability to communicate to the people the processes you are going through. And when there are checkpoints, when there are obstacles, like we have them everywhere all over the world, we should have somebody talking to us. It shouldn't be left to the opposition to be given documents by insiders to say this thing is back. We should hear it directly from the government. We shouldn't be waiting on the likes of Atiku Abubakar. We shouldn't be waiting on the likes of Peter Obi to tell us that this thing is back. It is. it is what it is because certain things go wrong. You can't have it 100% foolproof. When this thing was withdrawn last year, we were all very happy. And we saw the immediate impact. Like BKO said, a lot of state governments are getting more money. It's showing. If you look at the last allocation from the Federation Accounts Allocation, it's higher mm. than what people have always gotten. And the government is doing well. And these are the areas where government should be talking. Because when you don't talk, people don't know what you are doing. Government is able to save more. Our external reserve has risen. And that is the only way we can begin to reflate our Naira. Because when you don't have any backup, people look at you like you are defenseless. Your currency is at their mercy. They are the ones who will decide how you run. And those are the things the government should be proud of, should be talking about consistently. That's why we have the Minister of Information. That's why we have National Orientation Agency. That's why we have different layers of spokesmen in the presidency. People should be talking to us. Mm. Nigerians are not deaf. But when you begin, you wake up and what you are saying is the kind of news you are witnessing in Lagos. Now you know that the whole country is in trouble. In this, inside Lagos, people are buying from the pump 1,000 naira per liter. Mm. They are buying. It's not as if it's not available. But you see places where those Shylock people have taken over 1,200, 1, from the pump. If you reach for now, I can tell you some stations to go. You just drive in and buy under 10 minutes. So we need government to be talking to us. We know that it won't be easy to sustain subsidy. It can never be easy because there are people who are waiting for the slightest thing to profit from it. We were yeah. even taking loans to pay mm -hmm. subsidies. And people are waiting. People, anybody people are even waiting. We taking loans. We didn't, have the, money. We didn't have the money. The, 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 the previous regime you know? was spending 97% of its earnings to service debts. Debt. Where are you going to find money to do other things? And then this government is really not talking about the fact that it has reduced that to about 60-something percent. No, they, they, they talked about no, it. No, I'm saying it, it, should, be, it, it should be strident. We people, should not drown the opposition. There are people don't want to hear that. Even exactly. If that uh, tomorrow, uh, they, they will point at hunger. We see everything through the prism of hunger. We see everything through the prism of our belly. They are talking about... Uh, Tangible things, people will say, sometimes they will say, oh, how does he put food on my table? No, it's a very asinine, it will, ultimately. Very asinine uh, um, uh, uh, question, question to ask. Mm -hmm. You are talking about something really germane. And they ask, 
how will they put food on my table? Must everything end up in your belly? Also, these are the issues. Mm. The point is, subsidy was removed. Even in 2016, 2017, this same thing happened to Buhari. Buhari stopped when we had that recession. The price of uh, crude oil in the international market came down and there was no need to pay subsidy. Mm. But when it went up again, between 2016 and uh, 17, government was now back to increasing fuel price from 87 naira to, I think, 140 or 145. Yeah. If you recall. Yeah. yeah. That was what caused it. And then from 165. Because when it came it down, down, it came down, I think it was, came down to less than 30. Mm -hmm. 30 dollars per barrel. A barrel. Yeah. There was no need to pay subsidy. So, in effect, at that time, there was no subsidy. And the government was talking about that no subsidy is gone. <clears throat> but when it went out in the uh, international market, when it went up, they had no choice. That was when Buhari moved price to uh, 145 naira from 87 naira that it inherited it from the Jonathan administration. So it's just a case of okay, you had a plan, it didn't work. What do you then what do? do? You do? do you then make no. Nigerians to suffer as a result of that and double the price? Mm. No, it's only an insensitive and extremely wicked government yeah. that will want to do that. So they found a way. NNPC has obligations to make to the Federation account. Mm -hmm. Some of these payments have left it unable to meet that obligation. Completely. But is it not even better to keep prices stable right. than do the opposite and make Nigerians even suffer the more. So for me, I would rather vote for something that makes Not life easier. easier for for our people. And I, again, I said, Atiku Aubaka will not give an alternative solution. Yes, to the mess that we find ourselves. If you are angry that they are paying uh, subsidy, they find a way to pay subsidy. What is your option. Will you then suggest that they should go and sell petrol at 1,400 naira per litre? Mm. We have scarcity now. I don't know what caused the supply hiccups, but I know that things will come down. Yeah. They will solve, they will, they will, they will address, solve the, address the problem. When they address it, nobody will buy petrol at 1,200 naira in Lagos. Because before now, I wasn't buying it. We know that there's a, they there's have a, a problem. problem. Yeah, there's a are. problem which we expect them to address, address. Yeah. Yeah. if the people there know what they are doing. Mm. If they are to keep their jobs, uh, they must solve this problem. But in ah. talking about addressing the situation, one would say that the long-term solution we need right now is for our refineries to be working at optimal capacity if we're to go away from fuel subsidies and all the shenanigans that goes with it as well. Refineries must work. Our currency must get stronger. Whatever you do that does not affect our currency. Because we will never sell at below the international price. Mm -hmm. No. If our currency is strong, it can absorb the shocks that are pushing prices sky high. So whatever we are doing, people like um, um, Ola Emeka Doso, the CBN governor, they should put on their thinking caps. And very quickly too. We can't have a situation in which Naira is exchanging for 1,600. That should even be a personal shame to, to the CBN governor. That in his time, that is happening. He has to manage our currency better. If our currency gets stronger, the landing costs that people are talking about will also go down because our currency is because our currency is weak. That's what yeah. drove up the landing cost. They know the people who are making a mountain out of a mohi, shouting that we are paying subsidy, we are paying subsidy. They know that is the, the value of the currency that pushed things up. And I am saying, let's strengthen our currency. Let's take steps that will strengthen our currency. All the countries of the world do not leave their currencies to simply uh, float against international currencies. You have to find a way. China has been tampering. China has been tampering with its currency for years. America has been complaining that China deliberately undervalued its currency to attract, uh, to encourage 
uh, people to buy their product. They want to export as much as possible. Mm -hmm. They kept the value low so that people will be encouraged to buy. Mm -hmm. their <laughs> so it, it's still part of intervention in right. your currency. Right. So we cannot have a situation in which our currency, I do not even agree that the, our, our Naira is that weak. <laughs> how did we get uh, how did we get to so 1,600? Yeah. And when you want to do auction, you want to do auction, you even go as high as 1,500. That is nonsense. <laughs> We've got to do something about our currency. Well, we when do. we do that, it will affect every other thing. This landing cost will not be this high because the currency has the power, uh, the, the power to absorb the shocks. Okay. So these are the things. Let them continue to subsidize the uh, petrol the way they are doing. Right. They should not listen to Atiku <laughs> or anybody <laughs> who wants Nigerians to buy at the landing cost. All right. Well, that's where we have to leave it, gentlemen. Mm. Thank you so much for your insights. Of much lately, Dr. We could have taken more from your perspective uh, on fine. this, but that is where we have to it's end fine. today's program. Dr. Oladipo and Babajide Kolade Otitoju, thank you so much, sir, for your insights on the show. And that's it on today's edition of Journalist Hangout. Join us again for a repeat broadcast of the show at 11. Join us as well on Sunday from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. And we are on.